Welcome everyone to another episode of Final Drive TV. Today we are here in Infineon Raceway in the middle of the beautiful Napa Valley region in Northern California to bring you round two of the Nito Tires United States Touring Car Championship. My name is Loretto Stribling and joining me today as always is Rick Nanini. Hi Loretto, this has to be one of the best racetracks in North America. It's a great view. Well, let's go downstairs now to meet the other two members of our team who are standing by, Jennifer Grossman and Jeff Lepper. Hi, this is Jennifer Grossman with Final Drive TV. We're here for the Nitto Tire U.S. Touring Car Championship in Napa Valley at Infineon Raceway. I'm here with Jeff Lepper. Jeff is helping me out today with hosting and interviewing drivers. He's also announcing. Jeff, how did you end up announcing? You have a good view from up there, don't you? Oh, man, you can see the whole track from the top of that Infineon Raceway suite up there. Going to be in the air conditioner because, as you know, heat is going to be a, a factor this weekend for sure. So I get to sit in a nice cool AC, get to talk in a mic, maybe I'll sip some wine, have some cheese. You know, we are in Napa Valley. Absolutely. Well, I'll be sweating it out in the pits with the drivers. Uh, Jeff was just explaining to me we're actually standing in front of the San Andreas Fault at Infineon. So that's an interesting bit of history. Yeah, it sure is. You can see the line right up there. So uh, <laughs> it'll be interesting. Maybe the, maybe the cards will shake it up more than the ground will here this weekend. So we'll have to wait and find out. Well, I've not seen that happen so far. In fact, Infineon is a, a track that's near and dear to me. Uh, it's one of my favorite tracks in California and in the Bay Area. It's a very technical track. It has some really great corners. Jeff, I know you've driven here a lot as well. What's your favorite part of the track? Man, i, I got to tell you, pretty much the roller coaster effect. You come up to turn one, turn two, you're going way up in the hair. You're pointed up. You, all you see is sky. you got to turn in for turn two, and, you did, and it just drops out from underneath you. It's totally blind. You can't see anything. So I'd have to say coming up the hill and then back down. And, of course, you got the dreaded turn 10 that uh, – Turn 10 bikes again, you know, turn 10 bikes again. That's always the, been the motto here, you know. It's uh, very scary. Right. There's a great big wall right there at turn 10. Uh, I'm particularly fond of turn 6. It's one of those that reminds me of a freeway on-ramp. <laughs> Well, definitely the carousel. And that was what was funny. When NASCAR first came to this track in 89, Ricky Rudd, of course, was the first winner. They did run the carousel. Now they have that inner loop bypass now. So they took out the only left turn for NASCAR at Infineon. I just don't understand it. But uh, yeah, it looks like the U.S. Touring Car cars, are, are they're definitely handling it okay. Uh, we'll have to see how they're going to adjust to the heat because, you know, Thunder Hill, it was a little bit chillier. A longer, more horsepower track. This is definitely a more technical track, more of a handling track. And then, like I said, we have the heat. We'll have to see how those NTO1s are going to set up on each individual car. Earlier in the day, we had a chance to meet with some of the drivers and see how their team was doing. So for that, first we go to Jeff. I'm here with Andy Chittam driving the BTM Motorworks Le Mans karting BMW 318i. We had a couple on-track sessions already. So, Andy, tell me how your car is acting today. It's working really well. We did a lot of uh, work with uh, the suspension on the off season, and uh, it looks like it's just starting to uh, pay off about now. We, uh, we're one of the fastest cars out there, and it worked really well. Well, being one of the fastest cars out there already, is there any changes you're looking to make, anything you need to improve on to get up into the top position tomorrow? Um, absolutely. It looks like our overall pace is still just a little tick or two behind the leaders, but uh, we're going to keep working on that and see if we can't uh, give the, uh, the front guys a real good run for their money. I'm here with Jerry Bradbury, driver of the Mini Mania Bay Bridge Motors Mini Cooper S. So, Jerry, you actually came up through the ranks. This is going to be your very first professional U.S. Touring Car Race. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm a little excited about it, of course, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to run in a pro series like this, and it's really a good intro for somebody who does come up through the ranks like myself who started out with a daily driver in class one and then worked all the way up and to be invited to run in this series very exciting all right i'm here with pete bovenberg driver of the mbo motorsports red zone performance ppg we got all kinds of sponsors here cornwell tools honda civic so pete you've had a couple sessions on the track right now how's your car uh we're doing okay you know it's always a uh process of uh uh, tuning and adjusting the cars. That's why it's called a tuner series. Uh, the competition is really tight. The, the cars are separated only by a couple seconds. So the, the team that can really tune the car and adjust the car is going to go to the front and be uh, spraying the champagne at the end. Yeah, Pete has a point. These guys have been doing this for a long time. Well, and that was before the qualifying was over. Now back to Jennifer and Jeff for their thoughts going into the race. So what are your thoughts going into this, Jeff? 
I don't know. We had two qualifying sessions. The cars seem to be handling the heat okay. Obviously, Bon Giovanni with that four-wheel drive, he's the heaviest car in the series. Qualified second. Yeah, it's nothing to shy about. We'll have to see if that'll last, if the tires are going to last or not. But how about this weather, huh? I don't really notice it. I mean, I, I think you do, being on grid, but you're in my office now. This is nice. Huh? You want to switch, maybe? We, I don't know. I'm thinking... You have to buy me out of here. I, I don't want to watch you wilt out there with the drivers, Jeff. Um, so Dave Bongiovanni, every time I talk to him, he says, oh, I think this car is only good for a lap. But I have yet to see that actually be true with him. No, it is true. It's good for a lap. The last one, when he takes the checkered flag first place like he did at the opening round at Thunder Hill. That's pretty much what he always does. I mean, it's always a mind game between the drivers. I don't have this. You don't have this. I have this. You don't have this. You know, so, you know, Dave's one of the better ones at that, of course. You know, being the team owner and winning with Dave Brown, the championship winning car, I believe in 06 was the, was the Evo. And, you know, he's going to keep going and see, you know, Dave lead the points. What more can you ask for? Qualified second, four-wheel drive on the front row. I look for Dave to be leading on the first lap. Kurt should fall in behind them, and everybody should just kind of stay right there together and see if they can run down Bon Giovanni. Interesting. Well, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing Andy Chittum, your favorite. Um, he's got a rear-wheel drive car, the only rear-wheel drive on the grid, and he always has a tremendous start, but it's difficult for him to hang on to it. I really think Kurt Simmons stands a very good chance of taking it, but Rod, Boy, Rod has been fantastic. Uh, I understand he had some technical difficulties yesterday, though. Well, they, it was a flat tire, but the flat tire was caused by a suspension failure, and that caused a lot of body damage. The crew actually worked all night. They had spare parts, took it off of another car, got the car going again. Unfortunately, they broke one of their really high, uber-dollar expensive shocks. Got a new suspension on the car, so he's kind of adjusting. Qualified six today, so we'll have to see where Rod's going to go because, yeah, he could be a dark horse, too. You know, second place at Thunder Hill, so look for him to pick up definitely more. And uh, it should be a very interesting race. Of course, that's what U.S. Touring Cars is about anyway, a nice door-to-door -door handle. And, you know, hopefully we'll be beating and banging and putting on a good show. <laughs> well, it's certainly a technical track, and it should be very challenging for the drivers. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jennifer and Jeff. That was very well done. Now we would like to take you to a segment we like to call Tech Tips. This month, Jeff introduces us to a couple of new sponsors that have joined the USTCC. I saw them filming this clip earlier, and this stuff is awesome. Wait till you see some of these things. We have a couple new series sponsors, and those are thanks to Rod Rojas. Tell us about the first one here, Rod. That's Molecule Nomex Care Products. Yes, uh, Molecule is a, a Nomex Care product that you can use at home uh, in your washer and dryer, and uh, it's very simple to use. Uh, it also it, it cleans the suit pulls all the uh, fuel, oil, stains, that type of thing out of the suit. It's formulated to do that. And then it also has a protectant in it that seals the suit without hurting the breathability. Right, so tell us, Rod, what do the drivers get? Are we giving away this to the fans, drivers, winner, runner-up, 10th place? How are we working this today? So the uh, first place winner will get a full molecule kit. Uh, it is uh, $100 value. You get 15 washes out of a full kit. And uh, so that's far more uh, economical than dry cleaning. Okay, Rod, so go ahead and tell us about our second sponsor. This is the GoPro Hero Camera. Tell us a little bit about how this works. Right. The uh, GoPro Hero Camera is a self-contained unit, and you can mount it on the car. It's very simple to mount, and uh, it records onto a 2-gigabyte SD card and runs on batteries, and it has uh, terrific uh, uh, clarity. Yeah, I was actually watching a preview of this, and I think I'm just going to use this as my regular digital camera, plus I get to use it on the car. I mean, it really is a cool thing. So uh, we're giving this one away to the announcer, right? That's what I heard. I mean, was, through the grapevine is what I heard. I might be able to hook you up. But this one goes, this particular one goes to the winner of United States Touring Car. Perfect. And it looks like we're having a little bit over $5,000 in prize money and contingency going out to the winner of round number two of the NATO United States Touring Car Championship, including these great prizes from New Series Supporters Molecule and the GoPro here at Camera. Thanks a lot, guys. Back up to you. What did I tell you? Those are cool. I want one of those GoPro cameras. Those are really cool looking. I think we have to wait outside for Jeff before he goes home to see if uh, we can manage to get one of those things. Great idea. I think I'm going to try and corner him in the parking lot. Okay, in the meantime, Jennifer's on grid as the drivers are getting ready. Okay, we're here with Rich Wu. Rich, uh, you had some more axle problems after we spoke after practice. You're in qualifying. You're lined up in, what, seventh? Um, how are you feeling going into the race? I know you've been working on the car all day. 
We have put two CV boots in today so far, so we're hoping this one will hold up. And uh, uh, we're not really sure what the problem is, but uh, again, we put a new CV axle in, so we're going to see how that works for today. So. All right, good luck today. Thank you. We're here with Andy Chittam. Andy, you, you're fourth on the grid. How are you feeling going into the race? Pretty good. Pretty good. I think uh, we'll have a pretty good start. Um, hopefully we can surprise a few people off the line, and then uh, uh, we'll just get up there and uh, hope, wait for everybody's tires to go off. Um, let all the heavy cars, uh, and po heavy powerful cars lose their tires, and I'll sail right in for the victory. All right. Thanks, Andy. All right. You qualified in first. You're on pole starting the race. How are you feeling? Uh with all the adjustments we made on the car uh, last night, the car handled real good this, this morning in qualifying. Uh, as long as uh, we can keep the temperatures down on the car and uh, don't drive the tires off of it, we'll be fine. Outstanding. Thanks, Kirk. Good luck. Thanks. Let me tell you, Rick, it's going to be a great race today. There are five or six guys that can easily win this race. Yeah, but it'll come down to who's smart enough to make it to the finish. Uh, these guys are going to be super aggressive at the start, probably. Okay, so let's run down the starting order for you. Starting on pole positions, Kurt Simmons, Sunnyvale Dodge, SRT4. Starting on the outside of row one is Dave Bongiovanni in the four-wheel drive big sport racing Inside of row two is Andy Hope in the smooth sports Acura RSXR. Outside of row two is Andy Chittum in the BTM Motorworks BMW 328 Ti, the only rear drive car in the field today. Inside row three is Rod Rojas in the Molecule Chevy Cobalt SS. Outside row three is Pete Bovenberg in the MBO Red Zone Performance on Pacific. Inside of row four is Rich Wu in the Koenig Wheels Acura Integra R. Bob Shear, who started on the first row in the last race, starts way back on the outside of row four here in the Ireland Engineering Mini Cooper S. Jerry Bradbury is next in the Mini Mania Mini Cooper S. Tom Petrie rounds out the top 10 in the Koenig Wheels Honda Civic. Okay, here the cars are lining up and getting ready for the unique standing start. Watch for this start. Yeah, keep your eyes on that white Evo. He should get a huge launch with that uh, all-wheel drive. And they're off. Bon Giovanni has the lead, but they're three wide into turn one. Everyone is catching that Evo, though. Hope and Simmons on the inside and Chittum is on the outside. Looks like Simmons has the lead, but Chittum bolted into second place, right behind him. And he goes to the place, Smooth Sports Acura, six balls in third, with the bunch of money. Fourth place in Evo. Boy, how did Chittum get such an awesome start? Never mind that, but take a look at the lead Simmons has opened up in just one lap. It's amazing. Let's take a look at that start again. First on board, our pole position starter, Kirk Simmons. Kurt just puts the hammer down and gets a pretty good start. Not too much wheels in there. Just fine. Now on board, Andy Hope's right hand drive Acura RSXR. Andy's trying to time this perfectly, just like a professional. He already knows what he wants to do and where he wants to go in his head before the wheel flies even moving. But uh, he just can't get past the power of the Dodge and he's on the wrong side of the track, so he has no choice but to follow Chittum. Now he's dicing with Chittum and trying to get by, but he just can't, doesn't have enough to make the clean pass. Now inside Chittum's car to see how he went from fourth to second and almost first. Yeah, he had a great launch. He was out of accelerating the Evo. He had to serve or swerve around the Evo, which cost him a little bit of time. If it wasn't for that, he would have probably been in the lead by turn two. Chittum's start was very impressive. How about we take a look now and see what Pete Bogenberg did in the Honda Civic starting in the sixth position. Pete had a terrible start. Uh, by the time he got hooked up and he was going, front guys were two seconds ahead and two cars passed him. Trying to be aggressive to make it up, uh, but at this point, it's really difficult to do. So, Kurt has built up a pretty 
solid lead and is enjoying being by himself in that third set. Being by himself is a huge edge. Behind him, Pope and Chittam are fighting and slowing each other down while Simmons is losing the edge. Someone better wake up and get the curtain curtain before he's out of reach. Whoa, well, the guys behind him just got a 15 minutes in them and Simmons almost spun the Sunnyvale Dodge at John Lennon. He caught it, but didn't lose a position, but it cost him precious seconds that he lost. But, uh, I think he lost at least three seconds right there. And watch as behind him, the two Andys are still at it. Hope gets a run on Chittam coming out of the carousel, but Chittam does the smart thing and holds the inside line. Hope just uh, outbreaks him to turn seven and uh, takes him on the outside. What a move! That, my friend, was a brave move. Now with Hope ahead of uh, Chittam, he has to go after Simmons. But Simmons is now a few seconds ahead despite the near miss, so Hope has to move his work cut out. But the race is still there. Providing there's no yellows, like in the hill rise race, uh, there might be a chance here. Of course, as we have seen, it is one thing to catch up to Simmons, but another to pass him. He can make that dodge as wide as a testarossa, if you know what I mean. Now the rest of the pack have caught up with Chittam, and there's a train of cars behind him. Chittam, Bonjivani, Rojas, and Bogenberg are all bumper to bumper waiting for someone to make a mistake. And there goes Bongiovanni, making the pass and getting second, third place. The best fight has to be between Rojas and Bogenberg for fifth place. This is a real dog. Rojas is in a very difficult position as he tries to make a move on Chittam, but at the same time he has to protect his back and not get passed by Bogenberg in that red Honda. Look, there's the mistake everybody behind Andy was looking for. Chittam goes a little too deep in turn four, and everybody just about goes by. One small mistake is the difference between the podium and the back of the pack. This was the theme at Thunderhill, and it seems to continue here today. Boy, this track is just living up to its reputation as being a very challenging course. And if you don't believe me, you can just ask Andy. Meanwhile, Bon Giovanni has taken advantage of the situation and has pulled away for a few seconds on these other guys. That is also what he wants because if you pressure that Evo, it's going to get hot and it doesn't stick as well. Exactly. You're getting pretty good at this, Loretto. This is what every uh, one of these guys wants, is to be left alone. Because when someone is on your butt and either you make a mistake or they run into you or you make a mistake and they pass you or something bad happens. So you just want to be on, on your own. The real action now is still the battle between Rojas and Bovenberg. Bovenberg has been getting a run on Rojas all day, and it seems to have a slight edge going into turn 11. That is true, but the problem is it hasn't been enough. Every time Bovenberg thinks he can get the inside line on the cobalt, Rojas shuts the door. Look, it just happened right there again. Bovenberg again tries to take advantage of a car in front of Rojas in turn 2, but the opportunity evaporated as fast as it appeared. You have to give it up to Bovenberg. He's had a lot of chances to pass Rojas. None of them have been great, but the door was always slightly open. Bovenberg has not forced the issue. He's showing patience, and that's very difficult. And it's showing that Bovenberg is actually thinking about the championship and not just the race, which is really good. Well, here they go again in turn 10, and this time Rojas goes wide. Rojas missed the apex and went wide, and this is the chance that Pete's been looking for. Rojas is lucky he didn't wreck the car there. That was either some great driving, a safe car, or just pure to luck. I don't know, maybe it was just a little bit of a... Now, Pete makes the pass that shows that patience is a great thing. Take a look at it inside Cobalt, and Rojas makes it look like it's just no big deal. Wow, these guys are just so calm. It's absolutely... Now, going into turn two, I don't know what happened to Bovenberg, but Rojas got him and made the pass again. But all that worked, and Bovenberg's back where he started from, and has to pass Rojas all over again. And I bet you he'll try it again at turn ten. Well, of course, it seems like Bovenberg is the strongest there. Careful! Wow, that was close. Yeah, with every lap, Pete's getting more desperate now. He has to realize that there's still a few laps left and not to go. He almost took himself out and Rojas. Now, watch this. 
Rojas is wide at turn one. He's in the dirt and spins out. Maybe the pressure of the battle was getting to both of these guys. Rojas spun out and continues, and it looks like he didn't hurt the car, but lost a few positions with Andy Chittam, passing him as well. Just in time for Chittam. The white flag just came out. Take a look at this. Opal's closed the gap to Simmons, and now they are basically door to door. Now it is just a matter of Simmons can hold on for one more lap. Opal looks very strong that last lap. Seconds, uh, Simmons. Wow, check that out, Rick. Makes it look so easy. He grabs the lead on the last lap. Yeah, that was awesome. All it took was a little pressure to get Simmons to go deeper than he wanted to, and that was good. Let's take a look at the replay from Simmons' car. You can just tell Simmons is giving it everything. He's hitting the rev limiter, he's just trying too hard to slow himself down in the process. Look, Simmons is not giving up, and he is going for the recap. Now it's just a drag race to turn seven. Simmons has the inside line going to turn seven. This is probably his last chance if he wants to get it done. And he does it! Awesome race on that note. But wait, they do the old over and under. Whoa, and the hope gets by again. This is awesome. Just getting tired sitting here in the booth just watching this. Excellent. There's the checkered flag, and Hope grabs his first win in his first race by laying back and being strong at the end. I think Hope got so excited he forgot to shift. You better take it easy and make it back in one piece. Yeah, and Simmons has done a great job gaining some points by finishing second place and getting one step closer to competing as a champ uh, champion. And look at this. Thumbs up from Kurt. Congratulating Hope. That's good for him. And there you have it. Another Neato Tire U.S. Touring Car Championship race. And Andy Hope scores his first win with the great battle in the Spoon Sports, OPAC Racing, and Acura RSXR. Kurt Simmons finished in second place in the Sunnyvale Dodge SRT4, and Dave Bongiovanni takes the final podium in the Good Sport Racing today how are you feeling after the race oh great i'm just excited to be on the podium again it's a it's a great experience u.s turn car has off to a great season and the competition is awesome um i had a problem on the start uh I went for second caught a box of rocks and unfortunately it flustered me a little bit and i wasn't really able to recover from it but uh, there was a lot of excitement out on the track and i was definitely working very hard well we went out in uh all but that last two laps essentially lap, lap and a half uh led the race and uh, uh, pretty much the tires were gone and the car was uh, running at 260 degrees and it just backed off all the timing. We had no power so it was just a matter of I was hoping I had enough lead to start with uh, to finish the race but it didn't work out that way. We went, Andy and I changed places a couple times there. I held them off and but the car just what I didn't have enough car left. That last lap was all she wrote. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was probably the most fun race I've ever had. It was like you know, we knew we'd have the car towards the end, but then he just kept going and going, and I was like, he's supposed to slow down now, and he didn't. And it just took everything I had to, to pull that one out. Yeah, that, was great. that was a great race, and uh, the start was tremendous. Where were you on the start? I was in third, so I was on the inside on the second row, and we kind of got a little jump, but then lost it. And, you know, honestly, I don't even remember who was in front of me or what for the first few laps until things kind of settled down. It was all I could do just to keep the car going. 
So, Jeff, that was a tremendous race. Uh, what did you see from the tower there that I didn't get to see out on the track? Uh, the cold air, the frost on the windows, you know, away from the sun, the shade. It was great. It was a blast. I had a blast there. We, had, we saw it just improves every single race. You know, here we go. We got five manufacturers in the top five, not one single, you know, same manufacturer. What a split we had. We had a two-and-a-half, three-second lead drop down to a half-a-second lead. We had a couple overtakings for the lead. We had cars off course, back on, spinning in front of each other, and we still had the top five cars finish within four seconds of each other. I mean, what parody for a series, I don't think any series in the world gets closer than we are here in the U.S. Touring Car. I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. Not to mention just the sheer amount of passing. I mean, going it four wide into turn one and having it winnowed down to, what, two by six? the first place position and then the second and third right next to each other through two it was just amazing well yeah you know in turn one turn two that's a single <laughs> lane through there and you're putting four touring cars in that position man i went crazy up there i didn't even know what to do or say or or where to go it was just ridiculous at how quick everybody was but a uh, good job out you know we had a couple of the same podium there bon giovanni and simmons are on the podium again so it'd be interesting to see how i think simmons should be in the lead in the points right now so your 2007 champions going into round number three, leading the points. So uh, we'll have to see what happens. They get to that new track at uh, the Thunder Hill backwards. Uh, lift. We got to work on that. Lift the third or whatever. However, we got to say what that is. They uh, reverse clockwise. Reverse. It's counterclockwise. Clockwise. It's clockwise. We'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, I know that I've seen it run backwards a couple of times myself, but most of the drivers haven't driven it very often that way. They don't do it that often. Um, I understand you can get quite a bit of air actually going over five in reverse, so it's very exciting. Your suspension's unloaded and then loaded back up. Um, it can be very dramatic and exciting, and it will be very hot. If it was 95 degrees out here today in Napa, it will certainly be extra super hot up at Thunder Hill. And we did see that today. Some of those storylines that we had earlier was going to be the heat and how the tires are going to react and how the cars are going to react. Kurt Simmons taking the lead, three-second lead. My, hey, my water temp's at 260. I got water coming in on the floorboard. He dropped back, ended up finishing second. So uh, we'll have to, that's going to definitely play a factor at Thunder Hill. Like you said, if it's hot here, it's going to be super hot there. So they're going to be making some changes in the next three weeks, get those cars ready for Thunder Hill. Absolutely. I know Andy Chittam in the BTM Motorworks BMW mentioned he was running an oil temperature of over 250. Uh, it was very, very hot out there, and certainly we saw some of that in the cars, but not so much that it split them up. It didn't really slow them down. So I think that between the tires and the regulations and the weights, uh, they really have a good mix. Yeah, it seems like it, like I said, it, it affected everybody. And it depends on whose car it affects more, but, man, it just made that racing, I think, just that much closer and made it that much better. So it's just definitely something to look forward to round number three at Thunder Hill. Absolutely. Well, it's a very exciting, exciting race up here at Infineon Raceway in Napa, California. Um, thank you, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. Thanks a lot to Nitto Tire. We had all of our great sponsors here in the U.S. Touring Car. We'll see everybody again. Round number three, Thunder Hill, May 3rd and 4th. Join us on Final Drive TV. Thanks for joining us. Tune in again next time when we'll bring you another exciting episode of Final Drive TV with the latest news from the world of cars. For more information and to view complete episodes, please visit us at finaldrive.net.